Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and we are looking at some loader shells today for the Halo. So if you have a Halo B, a Reloader B, a Reloader B2, a Halo 2, anything that use that Halo B shell style, these suicide shells will work for you. And these are Warrior suicide shells, and they are a different shell setup than what you're used to seeing with the standard shell right here. These particular shells, let me just grab this one for you because it's easy to see. Um, they are able to be opened up from the top as well. So there are two screws that come in from the top vertically right here. And if you pull these two screws out as well as the one in the front, you can take the top of the shell off and you can get in there and clean and do whatever you need to do, really cleaning wise, without having to separate the entire loader apart. Now I have a basic Halo 2 right here. This is just the, the generic version of the Halo 2. And I'm gonna pull this one apart and we'll throw it into one of these loaders real quick. Uh, we've got the Money, Urban Camo, Desert Camo, um, Wood, because it's just like a wood grain finish, and then this plaid one, which I kinda like, I like that plaid one. But we'll throw it into the wood one just because that one seems simple and easy to deal with. So let's move these out of the way. I'll give you some tips and things on loader shell switching while we're doing it. So first thing we're going to do is worry about the, the front here. So we're going to take the battery door off. Move that over there, get our foam out, and then get our battery harness out. Now I see all the time these uh, being put together improperly and even as I say that, this loader right here was incorrectly assembled as I'm looking at it right now. Whoever put this battery door on didn't look at this and realize that the the clasp, the harness for this was facing up like it is right here. It cannot be like that. It needs to be sideways so that when the battery door sits down, there's this flat edge to the inside of the battery door and it needs to push against this part of the loader or the battery harness right there. So that is not the way I would do it. Typically what you want to do is have it set up like this. I'm going to put this in here real quick just so you can see it. And then this would go on like that with the foam being above it. So your wiring critically important that your wires run to the side and then back. They cannot run underneath the battery case like this on the bottom and they cannot run over the top of the battery case like this when it's inside there. They need to run to the side and back. And the easiest way to do that is to lift the wires out of the way, drop the harness in and then take your battery wires and tuck them on the side like that. That way we know the battery harness is completely at the bottom of the, of the shell. The wires are to the side and you can put your foam in and you should be able to just slide that back and it should easily fit. If this wants to stick up like this, then something is wrong on the inside. It should, without any force, just go together. If it's not, something's wrong. All right, so long story short for that whole section, which is really the, the main point, we'll get those out of the way, put that over there. This can just stay loosey-goosey as it is. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Lift our lid up. I'm gonna just put my fingers in here and separate that out and then kind of wiggle at the same time. On the inside, I've got my thumb down inside of here to hold the blue uh, raceway in place. I'm gonna pull that out, all right? So our six screws are still in our shell right here, hopefully, yeah, looks like they are. Um, this is our cover for where the rip drive would be if we were gonna have a rip drive in it. Sometimes this tape likes to come loose. You can just stick it back on there. You can see that our wiring is running back from our board back here 
along the bottom little groove and then under and through. If we look at the front right here, you can see that there is this screw point. This is where this screw comes through and goes into here. Our wiring should run under that point or behind it. You can see how there's a little, there's a gap right here. Our wires go in there and then come up and through a gap that's inside here. Sometimes if you get them up like this and you're trying to run them through like that, when you go to put the two halves of the shell together, it will push this over and it'll get stuck in the middle right there and then you squash them when you try to put the other shell in. So we just run the wire under like that, then nothing's in the way. And then we have to make sure that this stays down in there when we put our shell on. If you put, if you have it like this and you go to put your shell on, you're gonna chop that wire in half right there. Like that. All right, from here, we wanna grab our board and our back plate and wiggle them up and then we can grab the whole unit and pull it out. On this particular shell that we're gonna do right here, it has a lid on it, so we don't need to pull this lid off. We're just going to move this to the side for now. Right. Now, we're gonna take this apart. So we do need to separate all the sections of this loader when we're doing it. So first things first, Let's do one, two, and three. Now I should let this come out and off. So one thing you have to be careful with on these suicide shells is when you lift these or this top piece off, the two screws that go through here go into here and there's these little metal tabs that fit inside here. Now, these are not glued in in any way. So it is very easy to lose these if you tilt this to the side and wiggle it around. This little um, binding post right here that the screw actually goes into can get lost. And if you lose this, your shell won't stick on. So. Be very careful with this. When I used these shells, what I would do is take a tiny bit of uh, super glue, and after I put my post in like that, I would take a little dab of super glue and I would just put it right on the side right there, and I just boop, just like that, and that would um, that would keep that little tab in there and it wouldn't let it fall out. So if I was ever doing work on it or anything, separating it out, I didn't have to worry about it. Anywho. Let's see if those pop out or not as we're working on this. So now, we can take that out. And again, that screw is much different than the one we saw in there. So try not to get your screws mixed up when you're doing this. Take that out of there. And then we've got one, two, three, this out just like that all right now we'll talk about these two screws in uh, one second because these are like these posts over here they are loosey-goosey now these two screws they're actually say the nuts right here they're just dropped into these little slots and if you tilt this thing on its side or whatever they will fall out so be aware of that that these are going to move on you and they're going to disappear if you tip them over. Um, and they do go in in a, a certain orientation. So check them as you drop them in there to make sure that they fit in the groove properly. If you rotate them uh, off, I wanna say off center, but off position, they won't drop in properly. All right, so here we've got these. Let's go ahead and drop our raceway in. So if you just go ahead and push the raceway in right now, um, you can have problems getting the board to fit in with the back plate. So what I do is I drop the raceway in, but I don't necessarily, <coughs> excuse 
excuse me, push it all the way down in there yet. I'm going to just kind of set it down in there and line it up with where I want it to go. Then I'm going to take my back plate before I have pushed my board into its grooves. And I'm going to line up the button with the buttonhole on the back of the plate. So I'm going to take those two and they're just kind of flopping around, but at least the button is in the right spot. And from this point, I'm going to first line up the back plate properly with the back slot. And because I already lined up the button on the board with the hole in the plate, my uh, button should be in the right spot. Now I can take my board and push it down into the little groove where it needs to sit. And now everything is correct with the board and the button. If you do it the other way, if you push your board in first, you go, okay, my board's in the right spot, and you try to put this plate in right now, there's a very high probability that you will break the button off. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna line the two pieces up before, and then work with the plate first, and drop the plate in, and push your plate down to the bottom, and then push your board down into the bottom, and then push your race down into the bottom, like that. And you see these little tabs? There's a tab here and a tab here. There's the same tab on this side and this side, which indexes the raceway to make sure that it's sitting in the right spot inside there. All right, now you can see that I lost a screw just by moving, or a nut, just by moving that around. Put that back on there. So now our raceway is in the right spot. We're going to look at our wiring really quick to make sure that that goes in the right spot. We're gonna tuck our wiring in the way we talked about it earlier. I want it to go under and behind kind of that post. It's right there. I'm gonna move this around just so it doesn't come up over the top right here. You can also like stick it out the tray down there because this is where our battery is gonna go. So outside this part is fine. And then we've got that, that. Everything looks good inside here. These wires are off to the side, plates in, boards in. We can take this and slide this in. So what I'm gonna do now is do the same thing on the back side. I'm going to line up the back with the plate before I try to get everything else in the front lined up. So I wanna make sure that that's going in properly. So got this lined up on the back side right here so that it can slide down. I'm gonna push that down. Then as I'm pushing this down, I wanna make sure that my race fits into the other side properly. It does. I'm gonna look around here. I'm gonna take a peek up through here and make sure that the wiring that is supposed to come through this little slot has not accidentally got into this groove right here and therefore it's gonna get squashed when I try to put it together. That looks good. Everything looks good. I can squeeze it together and then I can go ahead and tighten everything down. Now one thing that happens quite often with these shells is as you're working on them, the, um, the little nuts that are on the other side will fall or shift. And so when you put the screw through, it doesn't actually make it all the way to the nut and it doesn't grab the nut as you're tighten, trying to tighten it down. So sometimes you need to push them back down. You can take the flat end of an Allen key and just go in there and push the screw or the nut back down and then go in and tighten that back up like that. Now, sometimes that nut will fall all the way out and then you'll need to make sure that you line the nut up properly with the cutout so that it slots in properly, push it all the way down and then put your screws through. So it's very common that um, those nuts fall out. It just happens. All right, now from here, we can take this. We're gonna make sure that both of our tabs are inside there, like we talked about earlier. We're gonna lock the front or the back in, so the back side 
has a little bit of a lip right here. We're going to kind of hook the lip on. What did I lose? Ah, lost this one. We're going to hook the back on and then set it down. Looks good. Tighten down, tighten down, tighten down. There we have it. All together, now we're going to take our battery harness, snap it together, move it out of the way, tuck our wiring down, put our foam in, Oop, that's the wrong one, put our door on, again, should go on easy peasy, Oop, the screw will give you the hardest part right there. Drop that in, and then there we have it. One loader put together with a suicide shell. And again, the easy thing about these is if you ever need to clean or get inside of it, you can take the lid right off and do your cleaning right there. So lots of colors to choose from. Uh, hopefully the insulation helped with how to do it because there are a couple nuances that can screw it up if you um, just rush through it. But pretty easy to do. All it takes is a screwdriver. That's it. Um, Warrior Halo Suicide Shells. But all sorts of different loader versions. All sorts of colors available. Right here. So get on the website. Check out the color availability. And order yours now through ansgear.com.